Okay, what I'm going to start uh, off by doing, I'm going to work with this, um, we're going to speak about pictures, images in general, okay? So I'm going to start off uh, with an activity. I'd like you to all close your eyes. I'd like you to think about Cinderella. And I'm going to ask you some questions about Cinderella. What colour is Cinderella's hair? How old is she when she goes to the ball? What colour are the clothes that she wears to the ball? What shoe size is she? <laughs> are her shoes comfortable? The ones she wears to the ball. What kind of perfume did she put on before she left for the ball? And what music is playing as she dances with the prince? Okay, open your eyes, talk to the person next to you and see if your Cinderella's are similar. <laughs> So you've got different versions of Cinderella from different cultures, uh, and you've got Cindy Ellen, for example, is the Texas uh, Cinderella. Um, so the Egyptian Cinderella, okay, there are different versions of this story. Uh, I always remember when I was doing O-level English literature, uh, we had to read and study Wuthering Heights. Uh, I loved the book and I read it and read it. And I had this picture of Kathy and Heathcliff in my head. We were taken with the school to see a film version of the uh, book, and I was devastated. Uh, Kathy in the film had long, red, uh, wind-blown hair. Uh, to me, she was dark, very dark hair. Uh, Heathcliff was nothing like I'd imagined. Okay? So we each have this image within our heads, and it's very often uh, different according to uh, what you've heard, what you've read, how you've imagined it, how your imagination's taken you. Uh, you've very often maybe heard of a person, maybe you've heard of me or you've heard mentioned and you meet me today and you think, she's nothing like I thought, just when we were waiting, you're nothing like Anne Robinson, you know, the television presenter from The Weakest Link that I quite often <laughs> get compared to, yeah. Uh, nothing. Uh, so that basically we build up our own image of things, of people. Has this happened to you? Am I ex what you expected? Okay, or did, had you not thought about it? Okay. <laughs> right. When I asked you to think about Cinderella's shoes, were they any, like any of these shoes? Okay. 
very possibly, if you thought of the Disney, Cinderella, they were like the ones in the middle, or the, or the Louis, Louis Vuitton, uh, the Louis, Louis Vuitton ones here at the bottom. I asked you to think about whether Cinderella's shoes were comfortable. Did any of you feel your feet when I asked you that question and think about if your shoes were comfortable? Okay, very often happens, okay? We think about, we put ourselves in Cinderella's shoes. When I asked you what perfume she put on, okay, I was always try also trying to activate another sense uh, of smell in this case. And the music that she danced to at the ball, again, I'm getting you to sort of uh, bring that image alive and put yourself in it. <clears throat> Our students uh, learn, perceive, remember for different reasons. Um, and as we all know, we've got these multiple intelligences that we're trying to incorporate into our teaching. So by making images come alive and making them multi-sensory, hopefully we can help with memory, learning and motivation. When we're talking about the weather or teaching uh, vocabulary to, deal, to do with the weather, we can show them pictures maybe not of symbols of sunshine or a weather map, because you don't really live that, do you? You don't really feel it. By showing them pictures of people in different weather situations, then they can maybe relate better to those different situations. <coughs> so which photo am I in? <coughs> it's cold today, but I've had a great time. I've been throwing snowballs with my cousins and my sister. I'm going to have some hot chocolate now, and then afterwards we're going to make a snowman. Okay, I you can imagine which of the pictures I'm in, okay? Uh, each of you, choose a picture and tell the person beside you how you feel and what you can see and smell and hear. my new history teacher, second year of secondary school. I had quite a boring teacher the first year, I can't remember anything particularly outstanding from that year. But this first day of class, she got us to close our eyes, like I did with you with Cinderella, and she described a scene to us, and again she described just more than the visual things, but also the sound, the smell, the smoke of destruction. Um, she described the Battle of Bosworth to us, uh, the final battle, battle in the War of the Roses, which then uh, heralded in the Tudor reign in England. And I can still remember that day where I was sitting, uh, what she told us, and what she told us about. Okay, so my image uh, really, really helped my memory there. So uh, I think it's very important. Can you rem uh, remember an image or a particular day in class at school? Did you have any teachers like my history teacher at your schools? Yes? Mm -hmm. okay. Right, images can also obviously help us to illustrate, that's their main, uh, the main reason for using images. So what are all these? Themes, okay. Would your students, where you teach, be familiar with all these kinds of beams? <coughs> for example, baked beans for a lot of students are a real cultural experience <coughs> if they go to the UK. Okay, they'll say, what's that? What are they? Okay. Um, so again, we can use these to illustrate language, but also use them multi-sensorially. Multi okay, so... Um, Choose one of the pictures of beans 
and tell your per uh, partner, the person beside you, whether they're soft or crunchy, whether they're best eaten hot or cold, and do you know any recipes for preparing them? <laughs> you might put in your mouth and get a big surprise like this, okay? What about these other beans? Okay, so images can help us to teach things, cultural things, things about Lexus. Um, so I, I live and work and teach in Spain. Um, so for my Spanish students, they have two different words to describe these two things. The top one is a bocadillo, and it's made with bread that you buy usually fresh at the baker's and put things inside. Whereas the second one is un sandwich, okay? Um, and it's usually toasted, okay? But for us, they're both sandwiches, okay? So again, making them aware, you know, if you take a cake, a cake can be a gato, it can be a cupcake, can be a pop cake these days, okay? But they're all cakes. What about these pictures? Why do you think I might use these in Spain? And I think it's the same in Italy. So here, I might use these pictures to illustrate the point that, in English, the top picture is the weather, okay, shows the weather, whereas the second picture shows a clock which tells us the time, okay? Um, because the concept of time, the sort of abstract concept of time, uh, in Spanish is tiempo, and weather is tiempo, okay? But for me, it's not. The importance of using clear and unambiguous pictures is, uh, is very, very, um, is of great importance. This appeared uh, in 2011 uh, in part three of the Starters Reading and Writing Test. And you can find it in, uh, I think it's uh, six, uh, seven, uh, issue seven of the Starters Practice Tests. Um, <coughs> and all the words were related to school. And we had the example, the next two words, they had to rearrange the letters on the blackboards. And I was invigilating the exam, and it happened not just in one session, but in more than one session, that good students especially got to number five and were stuck. Okay. Why? Okay. That picture is not a clear representation of a teacher. There is confusing, distracting information there. There's a board, but we already had board in number three. There are students, it's in a classroom. Okay, so the picture distracted them from the right answer. It wasn't that they didn't know the word teacher. It was the picture was not clear. This has also happened in the speaking <coughs> test. So this was 2009, uh, in one of the speaking test packs that we used at starters. Again, uh, me as a, a speaking examiner, I had, again, usually, actually, interestingly enough, the stronger candidates. Uh, the question with this, the, there are three questions with the object cards. The first question is always, what's this? And then some kind of, what colour is it, or whatever, and, and then it's something for them. Yeah? So, what's this? A 
Okay, we have backup questions, okay, if they don't come up with the answers. So it was, is it basketball? And they all went, ah, yes. <laughs> okay. um, we sent off um, feedback, as we always do on speaking test material, to Cambridge, and since then they've actually changed the pictures, if they use them for this part of the test, to something like this. Okay, and here I've not had any problems whatsoever. Right, another thing to think about pictures. Um, as with teaching, there are so many things to think about. But look at that back picture of basketball again. Look at it now. And look at it now. Okay? Why am I showing you the top picture and the picture on the right? What's happened to the picture? Okay, so this is uh, the basketball picture of, of two girls playing basketball as seen <coughs> by colourblind students. The most uh, common form of com uh, colour blindness is uh, the one in the top picture. Okay? So what we lose are the greens and the reds. They're the ones that go. Uh, the uh, simulation on the right is less, <coughs> less frequent, but it does happen. Okay? So if you're using pictures with lots of greens and reds in them, then there may well be a student, usually male, okay? Uh, about, it's estimated about 7% of US males might be colorblind and only 0.4% of females. So it's much more likely to happen with your male students, your boys, rather than your girls. Okay, if you are in doubt, okay, and you want to check, then what I did was I uploaded this picture to this website, bizcheck.com, and it shows you what your picture would look like to a colorblind student. Um, and you can also take a colorblind test. I don't know, when I, when I started using glasses as part of the eye test, they uh, gave me a colorblind test. And on this website, you can take a colorblind test to see if you are colorblind. <coughs> Pinterest account, and I have uh, created a board um, with some of some pictures like these. Why have I created that board? What am I illustrating? So, what can you see? You can see a man watching his watch. There are letters coming out of the letter. The mouse is manipulating the mouse, and somebody is waving through the wave. So multiple meanings, okay, uh, can very often, not always, uh, be illustrated uh, through pictures, through images. Um, yeah, so if you look me up on Pinterest, if you've got Pinterest, you can uh, share my board, and you can add to it. Um, uh, Anne Robinson, Spain, I think is my username. <coughs> right, what's this? What, what time of day is it? Morning, afternoon, night? Late afternoon, yeah. This, this, this computer, or the I'm not sure, it's actually dulling the colours a bit, okay? It should be a bit brighter. Um, okay, but is it uh, evening, towards night? No, why? What, tell, what is it about the sun that tells us that it's not sunset? The colour, the rays of sun, the fact that we can see the whole sun and not just half of the sun, okay? What also tells us that. Okay, if this was in a big picture, where do you think it would be? Near the top, right, left, bottom? You think on the right, and at the bottom, or at the top, in the middle? At the top, okay. Right, let's see how we do this. Okay, what I'm gonna ask you to do is uh, to get into groups of six, seven is the ideal number. You don't actually have to physically move, okay? So maybe if, if, we, if we take each sort of pair of rows, 
get yourself to in get yourselves into a group of six or seven people. So, for example, you four join them, please. Okay. Is to give each of your members of your group a number from one to seven. In some groups, you might only get to six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. <coughs>
things that are normally up in the air, near the ground, uh, the way some, something is facing often gives us that kind of information, because these are all useful things for our students to develop their real life skills. If I show you this next picture, look at the sun. What time of day is it? It's the evening, the sun's going down, it's disappearing, it's much more orange, we can only see part of it, okay? Um, and this picture, again, is from starters level. The activity here is listen and draw lines, because Sam and Bill are taking things home at the end of the, of the day. Uh, you can also play a game. You ch each student chooses two things to put in their bag. They're either Sam or Bill, and they will play a guessing game. But I believe in reusing pictures. If you like a picture, there's no reason just to use it at the level it was originally designed for. So here, we can use it movers. We can say, Bill, what did you bring to the beach today? I brought my sunglasses and I brought the radio. Why did you bring the radio? Because I wanted to listen to some music. Okay, so we can use it at higher levels. We don't just have to stick to the original level it was uh, designed for. Uh, again, experience. This is uh, from a movers reading and writing part two where they have a big picture and they have to write yes or no after sentences to say if they're true or false about the picture. And if you read the report, this is from 2009, um, if you read the report, uh, sentence number two was the sentence that most students uh, wrote yes, and it should have been no. And the sentence was, uh, the boy is riding a bike to the house. <coughs> and there's one little word, to, yeah, that made that sentence a no sentence. Students read it too quickly, or also in my experience, don't notice direction. Okay? Very often in part um, one of the flyer speaking test, you've got a picture with differences, and inevitably when you've got somebody going upstairs and in the other picture they're coming downstairs, <coughs> students don't see it. Yeah, they find it difficult to see. It's not like they're not the language, sometimes it is, but uh, very, more often than not, it's because they don't actually see the direction of movement. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the pictures they've got are the pictures on the slide there. Okay. So as you can see, there are lots of similarities, but there are lots of differences too. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, uh, it's going to be a bit difficult, okay, but don't uh, stand on anybody in front of you. But I'm going to say a sentence about the pictures. If the sentence is true for your picture, take one step forward. You'll have to take quite small steps. <laughs> you can take big steps as you like. Okay. There are three pictures on the wall. <laughs> both, both the cupboard doors are open. <laughs> there is a plant in the corner of the room. There are three people in the room. 
Both girls are sitting down. You can start going up. Okay. <laughs> Both the girls are playing with dolls. <laughs> Some of the books are open. <laughs> There are lots of books and toys on the floor. <laughs> the mother is pointing to the things on the floor. <laughs> the girl with the biggest doll is holding a bottle. Okay, so the people who met in the middle, hopefully, what, which picture have you got? One, one, one. one. Okay, right, so there were more true sentences about one than there were about the other pictures. Okay, can you pass the pictures back to the front? Okay, so we're, busy, we're, we're visibly seeing comprehension, okay? Um, right, and I use, again, I revisit pictures at higher levels, and I use them again, okay? So with these pictures, which are from starters, we could use them at movers and flyers, and you can use any pictures <coughs> in this way, by practicing the reading and writing part one, definitions, okay? So, I'm going to give you, uh, read you a sentence, and it defines something in these pictures. Can you tell me which picture you can see this thing in? Yeah. <coughs> we put these on walls in houses or schools, and then we look at them. What am I talking about? Pictures, okay, and they're in one, two, and three. You wear these on your feet inside shoes. And where can you see socks? Right, you can't, well, yeah, maybe you can see them on the girls' feet in three. Okay, they're actually shoes, it's not very clear here. <laughs> uh, you put this on your bed and you sleep under it. Uh, on the start, Young Learners World list is blanket, okay, although this looks maybe like a quilt. Uh, some people wear this round their neck when it's cold. Okay, it's a scarf and it's uh, on the top of the wardrobe in one. Okay. okay, and then I would ask my students choose something in the picture and write their own sentences or say their own sentences um, for things we can see in the picture. Okay. So. What I aimed to do uh, in this short session was to think about pictures and images and how we can use them to teach, how students can learn, how they can develop their skills. Uh, not just language skills, and uh, very uh, importantly, to make things memorable. So I hope I've done that. Yeah.